All right. Hey class, welcome back. Uh, we are on our fourth and final video about turbulent flow through pipes um, using the Darcy Weisbach equation and using the Moody diagram to solve these problems. Uh, this is what I call a type 3 problem. Um, this means that the pipe geometry is unknown, and so this will often take the form of finding the pipe diameter or radius. Um, and the key thing that we're going to remember about a type 3 problem is this puts us into an iterative mode. Uh, so we're going to have to guess and check friction factors. So you're given information about the fluid properties, so um, you know what that fluid is. Density and kinematic viscosity are known. Um, you know something about the flow, either the velocity or the discharge. Um, you know something about the pipe material, so your epsilon would be given. Um, and what you're after in a type 3 problem is, again, that pipe geometry. And so the method here is very, very similar to a type 2 problem. We're going to guess a friction factor. Using that guess, we can calculate pipe diameter. From pipe diameter, we can calculate the roughness ratio and the Reynolds number. Take all that to the Moody diagram and see how good our guess was. And uh, unless we're extremely lucky, the F friction factor that we guess will not be the friction factor that we read. So we'll take that friction factor that we read off the chart, use that as our new guess, and we're going to iterate through steps one through six until the friction factor you put in is equal to the friction factor you get out. Uh, let's see what that looks like in practice. So here's a very similar setup to what we used for a type 2 problem. Uh, we've got two reservoirs, water draining from the top one to the bottom through a cast iron pipe, um, a head drop of 80 meters, 185 meters of pipe. Uh, we know the flow rate of 7 cubic meters per hour. Um, we have looked up that roughness ratio of um, 0.26 millimeters based on the given cast iron. Find the pipe diameter. <sighs> We, we have a little forehead moment. Yep, this is a type 3 problem. Buckle up, it's time to iterate. So how is this problem going to work? Well, at its most basic level, this is an energy equation problem, where where we end up, the left-hand side, equals where we began, um, the pressure, elevation, and velocity terms for point 1, minus the head loss that happens along the way. So just a quick schematic to show you, I'm going to pick the water surface in the upper reservoir for point 1, and I'm going to pick the water surface in the lower reservoir for point 2. So I'll set my lower datum at a z of 0. I'm picking the water surface, so I've got atmospheric pressure, and out in those reservoirs, um, the velocity is 0. Now, some of you might be asking, well, hey, Adam, if velocity is 0, how is there head loss? Um, that head loss is occurring in the pipe, right? So by putting velocity zero, as I've shown in purple pen here, um, we're not saying there's no flow in the system or that velocity is zero through the pipe. We're saying it's zero at the points that I've picked, right? So at point one and at point two, none of the energy is associated with velocity. It's all in the form of either pressure or elevation. Uh, but that head loss absolutely still exists. Water is flowing through that pipe. Uh, it's a non-zero velocity in the pipe, so we have to think about head loss there. So this problem simplifies down to the elevation of water surface 1, or Z1, is equal to the head loss, or equal to the friction factor times L over D times V squared over 2G. And we don't know the velocity in this problem, um, so what I'm going to do is use the, our knowledge of Q equals A times V, or velocity is discharge over cross-sectional area. And you can see I've taken out the V squared, and I've subbed in a Q squared over A squared. And so in, in my little notation there, you can see in blue I've just put squares on each of those three terms. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in the information that we know. Um, so what I've rewritten here in black is exactly what we had. I've just subbed in the values everywhere that we used to have a variable. Um, and you find that you've got a problem. You've got any, one equation with two unknowns. 
uh, and lacking any other information, that's going to be insufficient to solve the problem. Right? So this is why we end up in this guess and check. Right? What we're doing is using the empirical Moody diagram sort of functionally as another equation in this problem. Now, what I'm going to suggest to you all is because this is an iterative problem, because we're going to have to use this equation multiple times, and mostly because I'm a lazy problem solver, um, I'm going to go ahead and simplify this equation. Uh, and what I mean is I'm going to try to solve it for diameter as a function of friction factor. And so all of the various um, canceling of units, all of the uh, numerical terms, all get compressed together into an equation that looks like this. Diameter is equal to some number times the friction factor to the one-fifth power. And that number, um, I would use Wolfram Alpha, for example. Um, I've just combined all of those terms and all the squares and the pies and the denominators and numerators uh, just to make my life easier. And as we go through the subsequent steps, you'll see why I've elected to make my life easier. So now we have two equa or now we've got our equation here. Um, still one equation, still two unknowns. So we trigger this guess and check phase. So let's make a guess. Let's say the friction factor was 0 0.030. On what basis? It's a guess. So I'm picking a value that's in the middle of the Moody diagram. With that friction factor and the simplified equation from the previous side, or slide, um, if that is the friction factor, the diameter of pipe you would need would be about 0 0.0293 meters. With diameter, you can calculate that relative roughness, or that epsilon over d, of 0 0.0089. You can calculate the pipe velocity because you now have area, so velocity equals Q over area. Get a velocity of about 2.88 meters per second. With velocity and diameter in hand, you can calculate a Reynolds number. And so you see me plugging in the density of water, 999 kilograms per cubic meter, the calculated velocity, the calculated diameter, uh, and viscosity in the denominator here. I'm going to get a Reynolds number of about 7.53 times 10 to the fourth. Whew. Okay, so I worked through those steps very quickly. The point is, once you guess that friction factor, it unlocks your ability to solve, um, to solve all the other parts of the problem. Now all you have to do is see, was my guess a good guess? And for that purpose, we're going to go to the Moody diagram. So we'll take... Um, the Reynolds number and that um, epsilon over D, we'll go to the Moody diagram, we'll read a friction factor, and we'll compare it to our guess. And we will keep doing these steps until our guess matches what we started with. So Moody diagram. There's my Reynolds number of about 7.5 times 10 to the fourth. Uh, we had a epsilon over diameter of 0 0.0089 and so you can see I've written that in red. Um, I find where those two things intersect and I read horizontally to the left uh, and I'm estimating a friction factor of about 0 0.034. This makes me sad because that is not what I guessed. I guessed a friction factor of 0 0.03. So you know I have to redo this. So let's do it. So I'll take the value I just read, friction factor of 0 0.034. And well, let's assume that was the correct friction factor. If that was the new friction factor, just like I did two slides ago, I can go through and calculate a diameter for the pipe of um, about 0 0.0301 meters. We can calculate that new epsilon over D. We can calculate a new velocity and a new Reynolds number. And you may already know what's happening. We're going to take our new values for epsilon over diameter and Reynolds number, and we are going to see how our friction factor guess worked. Back to the Moody diagram. I find my Reynolds number of 7.33 times 10 to the fourth. Uh, and I find that vertical line. 
I find my roughness of 0 0.0086 in this problem. And where those two intersect, I then read horizontally, as I have shown in orange. Uh, and I would read a new friction factor. And I'm going to stop working through the problem here, uh, but hopefully you get the idea. You read the friction factor in orange there. Maybe it's about 0 0.036, something like that. 0 0.036 for our friction factor. Get yourself a fresh slide, calculate pipe diameter, then calculate epsilon over diameter, calculate velocity, calculate Reynolds number, come back to the Moody diagram, find your Reynolds number, find your friction factor, where those intersect, read horizontally, cross fingers that the friction factor you put in is the friction factor you get out. Uh, it typically takes two to four iterations for this to work. Um, the more extreme the friction factor is, um, so at the high or the low end of the spectrum, the more times it'll take you to iterate. Um, you'll notice I made the guess of 0 0.03 initially. The reason that I pick it is it's approximately in the middle, and so it gives me the best odds of being close. Um, this methodology will work no matter what you guess, um, but the worse your initial guess is, the more times that you have to iterate. Okay, so this is the end of our fourth video about turbulent pipe flow. Um, you've seen an introduction. We've solved a type 1 problem, which made me a happy man. We've solved now type 2 and type 3 problems, which make me less happy because I have to iterate. Um, at this point, you ought to be able to achieve um, those learning objectives. So you know how to use the Darcy-Weisbach equation um, as part of an energy equation problem. You know how to use the Moody diagram, and you can explain um, the workflow for these problem types. All right, folks, I hope this helps, and I will see you in lecture. Have a great afternoon or morning or evening, depending on when you're watching me. Thanks, all.